This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. President of the Bahamas Hotel and Tourism Association, Stuart Bow, says it's been a strong summer for hotels throughout the country. Yes, now, although he did not give specifics, he says the industry has had a record July, a great June and August, all amounting to increased heads and beds over summer 2013. In June, the Ministry of Tourism revealed that for the first quarter, air arrivals to Grand Bahama alone had increased 33%, and Grand Bahama and New Providence combined saw a 12% increase. According to the latest numbers from the Department of Statistics, from January to July 2014, room occupancy on Grand Bahama increased by 6.71% over the same period in 2013. Bo says throughout the family islands there has been an increase in occupancy numbers and the addition of the Memories Grand Bahama Beach Resort helped to push that trend. September and October uh, historically got a little bit slower. Um, some of the family islands they closed so they can renovate. Some of the major hotels do some of the things similar. So September and October right now is at budget which is obviously lower than the summer and we're looking forward to that. The months of November and December will be very busy. Obviously in November some of the major hotels like Atlantis, they are battle for Atlantis that makes Thanksgiving full. December is going to be a little bit different this year versus other years. Christmas for the hotels is going to start a little bit earlier. Uh, now, Bo adds that hotel occupancy will be boosted by the Bahama Bowl that starts three days prior to Christmas when business at hotels is traditionally slow. Bo says a combined industry effort is responsible for the overall improvement in tourist arrivals and hotel occupancy. In the meantime, he says the industry will continue to improve on its product. Going in collaboration between the Ministry of Tourism and the hotels and what they do in Grand Bahama, same as the Family Islands and the Bahamas Hotel and Tourism Association. There's still obviously lots of projects, including Bahama, including projects in San Salvador, in Bimini and Eleuthera. So product-wise, um, we are on target. Obviously, we, we will continue to focus on service because price value is an issue. And if the prices of our products go up, the the Democratic National Alliance is speaking out on the crime problem in the country. At a press conference today, DNA executives, including Deputy Leader Chris Mortimer, suggested that the government doesn't have the resolve to address crime, noting that crime and the fear of crime continue to increase despite crime-fighting strategies. The DNA Deputy Leader also suggested that reducing criminal activity should be a top priority of the government, and he criticized Prime Minister Perry Christie for his decision to go back to the drawing back in order back in order to develop new strategies for attacking crime. Mortimer also laid part of the blame for rising crime in the country squarely at the feet of politicians. Officials all over my TV talking but they had the answers. And now he says two months in I got to go back because I have to go back to the drawing board because I had stepped away from the drawing board for two and a half years. It's a shame because the Bahamian people deserve better. They deserve his hand to the drawing board every day. We start to deal with crimes wherever it is. So, and you know, sometimes it starts right in the House of Assembly because the majority of people in our country feel that if the politicians could get away with obvious crimes, why can't they do it? So let's start there by punishing members of parliament who refuse to do disclosure. Now, Mortimer also called for Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Renwood Wells, to be fired in the wake of the controversy over a letter of intent Wells allegedly signed. Well, the scourge of marijuana has plagued the Bahamas for decades and is still considered to be a problem issue. Officials say it's now widely used by school-aged children. And to combat the dangerous trend, the Department of Social Services and Centerville Urban Renewal Offices hosted a one-day symposium aimed at educating area youth on the dangers of the drug. Diabetes on our bodies, for example, the blood. The carbon monoxide inhaled from BDs is three to eight times more than that of cigarettes. They stay in the blood for up to six hours, and then it attacks the red blood cells. And this is poison that goes to the brain and other parts of the body. So people use it in brownies, people use it in tea, people also chew it, okay? And the people have also placed it in candy. 
So there are many different forms, and I could tell you that when you eat it, it actually stays in your body a little longer, and sometimes the effect is worse. I actually know of somebody who died from eating wheat cakes. Now, officials were referring to the drug BD, which is commonly used among young people. Meantime, executive director of Teen Challenge, Eric Fox, stressed the need for these initiatives to take place more often. We can't assume they, they, they'll even go and read upon it. We can't assume they'll even read the packet. We, we can't assume that the parents will even try and find out. But if we can have these type of symposiums in the community, not just one time, we need to have this on a regular basis because we are fighting these stuff every day. We don't need us to have a one six, every six months. We have a symposium bringing some professionals to talk to these kids. We need to be out there every day bombarding these persons who are selling these illegal substances for those kids. We need to fight, fight them with information. They're giving these kids some information. They ain't influenced them to put the stuff in the body. We need to come to corner like that. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.